So I'm about to teach Year 6, um, it's a low ability group, um, set 3 of 3, and I'll be teaching them maths. Today we'll be exploring um, composite rectilinear shapes, so calculating area, uh, moving forward from our work on area that we've previously done, calculating areas of rectangles um, and other polygons. So a low ability group made up of 6 boys and 5 girls, um, one pupil premium child um, who since September has made a great deal of progress. Um, not in terms of attainment but effort um, and sort of mastering strategies she's really come on um, other children have exhibited challenging behaviour throughout the year but have come a long way and have learnt routines and strategies for managing their own behaviour so yeah, a challenging group but, but one, that have, one group that's made great progress so today we'll be introducing um, how to calculate area of composite shapes we'll be talking about what, what is a composite shape um, so referring back to polygons um, how we calculate the area of a rectangle um, and the fact that a composite shape is simply two rectangles or other shapes fused together. Um, so using what we already know to help us make those next steps. So we'll be taking part in two activities, one where it's very clear where the shapes are divided um, and then pupils will be asked to independently separate the composite shapes themselves and then um, calculate missing lengths using, again, known facts to, to help them. So teaching assistants today will be working with the, so the lower end of, of the group in terms of ability um, and she will be modelling strategies um, beyond the input, just making sure that everything is embedded before they attempt any questions independently. She'll also be there to sort of a comfort blanket if you like so that they can ask her questions at any point um, just to clarify understanding um, and she will move around the group to ensure that all pupils are, are supported. And I'm going to give a star to some, the person who remembers all of the information in their answer. There's a bit of a clue there. All of the information that I need for area. Three, two, one. Show me your boards. Very good. Excellent. We've remembered from yesterday. What unit do I need to write my answer in, Hara? Centimetre squared. Centimetre squared. That's really important. Excellent. Well done. So we've covered area. I'm going to pop some key words on the board today and I'd like to hear you using this vocabulary as you work through the lesson. So we've covered area. We'll come back to some of the others shortly. Victoria's method, length by width, 5 times 2 gives us 10 centimetres squared. This actually relates to work that you will have done years ago, back down in, in, in uh, year 1 and 2, looking at arrays. You probably don't remember using arrays because we don't really need them anymore. Okay? But it's a similar process. Okay, 5 by 2 gives us 10, and it's the same. If I go back to my rectangle, it's exactly the same for calculating the area. So can you see the connections there? Emily May's nodding. Good. It's all making sense. I'm very pleased. Okay, today we're going to be looking at the area of compound shapes. I'm putting the word compound up on the board because it's a new word. It's not a word that we've used so far this year. A compound or composite shape is a shape made up of more than one polygon for a star. Who can tell me what a polygon is? Victor? Is it a shape that is not like an even, it's not like a shape? Not quite. This is a polygon. I'm going to draw them as accurately as I possibly can. This is a polygon. Here's another polygon. Here's another polygon. What do we think? Hara? Is, 2D, is it a 2D shape? Made up of? Different um, different same size. Not quite, Ashley. Not quite. Oh, different shape. Straight sides is what I'm looking for. Okay, so we're looking for straight sides. That's a polygon. A compound shape or a composite, because there's two words we can use for this. Compound, composite. Two words that we can use to describe a shape that's made up of more than one polygon. Can anybody spot, like a detective, what two polygons have I used to make my new shape here? Talk to the person next to you. We might have some variations on answers. Let's see what we get. Taylor. A rectangle and a square. A rectangle and a square. Okay. Any other ideas? Hara? It's not that, but it's like a shape that's missing. <coughs> it's like if there's a, um, a shape that's missing. It's like a bit of it's been sort of, someone's taken a chunk out of it with their teeth. You're right. Uh, Taylor said a square and a rectangle, possibly. Okay, what if I divided the shape vertically? What would I have then? I can do it now for you. What if I draw a dotted line here? I've got two rectangles. So I could either have my... 
I'm not sure that that is a square completely. I would argue that that is also a rectangle. So I think we're going for two rectangles. Are we happy with that? Emily May, um, did you have anything to add? You could also just um, like put a line where like, like, um, and it's a square on top and then just they... Um, like this? Yeah, and then there's just like a normal... Um, is this a square though? What me? What? What? Why am I saying this probably isn't a square? Think about the properties of a square. Are all the sides? It's not very. It's not like. It's quite small. It's quite small. We could have a small square. Could have a big square. Still be a square. Hara. I've got two pairs of sides that are different lengths, absolutely.